Okay, we're off to a great start. Yeah, and I get where you're, where you started and uh-huh. where you landed. Yeah, I moved here like ten years ago because of wit. We met in New York. We were dating long distance, and I was like, I am gonna have to move if I want to. Yeah, marry that girl. Yeah, and then but I did. then you got good weather and a little bit more relaxed education. If you're just tuning in, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I sound different because <laughs> I'm than not Whitney. Not Whitney. <laughs> uh, this is Tim. Hi. And this is With Wit with Tim. That's what I'm calling it. With Wit with Tim. Yes. And this is my first interview with a guest. I'm honored. And please welcome Lisa Preston. Thank you for being here. Whitney and I discussed having you on because we were having a specific issue with Sonny. He's been drinking alcohol. I'm just (laughs) kidding. Um, Just to give you some background on me as a parent, I kind of thought I could kind of like feel my way through all the situations. Mm -hmm. Whitney had spoken to a nutritionist who had given her some advice on like eating and your kid. And and we talked about it on the podcast and it was so not what I thought and it worked so well. Mm -hmm. I realized I don't actually (laughs) know everything or can follow my gut or like definitely need some expert advice at times. And then we were having an issue with screens and, and I, if it's okay with you, would like to you know, chop up some screen talk. Let's do it. Let's okay. And we let's could do that. Merge your gut, yeah, with some actual some science, and then that'll be that. We'll have a plan, and then Sunny will be okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, screens. Mm-hmm. Why are they bad? Are they even bad? They keep you know the bugs out, and they let the air in. I'm confused. <laughs> So that was a joke that I wrote down, which that isn't as funny, funny no, when I wrote it No, it was, but it just like took me a second to get it. But now that you're, okay, you yeah. made a dad joke. Yeah, I did. And, you know, keep my dad alive. But but seriously, we have a six-year-old Sonny, and he loves Roblox. Sure. And he loves Minecraft, and he loves watching Minecraft videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And if we don't step in, he could go forever. Right. He's pretty good when we take it away. But when we take it away, he gets upset. And that is sort of a red flag to me. Like, it makes me feel like he's addicted to it. How do you know if your kid is addicted to a screen? Well, I think, okay, so screens themselves aren't bad, but how we use them can be bad. And I think framing it that way will help you over time not have too extreme of a relationship with the screens. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is that it depends on the kid. So you're noticing your your child's temperament and Sonny's a little bit into it. Mm -hmm. So some kids maybe don't have that much interest and so it doesn't feel worrisome. And for parents who notice that their child is super interested, you have to have guardrails because like with anything, you know, a car seat, you know your kid has to go into a car seat, whether they like the car seat or not, not your six-year-old, but prior. Yeah. And whether they like it or not, but a seatbelt you would always insist on, right? Mm -hmm. And even if they're fighting it, you're still like, yeah, but I know that this is a, an important decision for your safety. And so I think our relationship can withstand your discomfort. I mean, you're not saying those words because that would be a little. But that sounds like something but, I would be like, this is a non-negotiable. Like, exactly. You like, have to wear your right. seatbelt. And so finding the non-negotiables helps with you, like prioritizing your boundaries and your limits that you're setting around screens. So I would start with for knowing your child's temperament and Mm -hmm. knowing what matters to you, which it sounds like not having a kid on screens most of the time is important to you. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's figure that out right now in real time. Yes. What are your feelings about people in screens and, and devices and kids when you see them and what you imagine I feel like there's a group of people who kind of are just automatically like screens are bad, Mm -hmm. full stop. I am not one of those people. Okay. I think about if Sonny were really into soccer or painting and wanted to do that 24-7, that I'd probably be like, go for it, dude. Like, like how can I help? But the screen, what he's doing on on the screen obviously matters. And it, yeah. it, it has gone from some things that I don't like, like some mind-numbing YouTube videos, like with teenagers buying the 100 most dangerous items on Amazon and like jumping into yeah, a pool. Or whatever. Like, I'm like, don't do that. But like yeah. Minecraft and parts of Roblox, um, I see kind of a nice 
part side to it. Uh huh. But I think my issue is just with the amount of time. Okay. And the difficulty to stop. So it sounds like you want a balanced approach to screens, not an extreme approach, but you want to help him have a healthy relationship with screens. Yes. Yeah. Does that sound? That is totally right. Like it works for you? Yes. Okay. So a couple of things just based on what you said from the four minutes that mm-hmm. we've talked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I know for sure, but what I'm guessing is first there is a difference between supporting something that your child loves. Yeah. That's like painting or soccer. Right. And supporting something that your child loves that's like chocolate. Mm-hmm. Right. You would limit the chocolate. You wouldn't say no chocolate because mm-hmm. that seems mean. Yeah. You might. That's but I'm hearing from your description that you wouldn't. I would not. But you would have a limit because you would think that feels like you have to have other nutrients. Mm-hmm. So I would think of screens in that way, like you do nutrition and think of them as dessert or, you know, foods that aren't necessarily growing you, mm-hmm. but they're fine in moderation. Now we're working off the assumption that that these screens are not growing him. So very rarely is screen time growth time, which is okay. Sometimes, like there are some games like Roblox Mm -hmm. and Minecraft Mm -hmm. in the creative setting, Mm -hmm. which and set privately, hopefully. Mm -hmm. If not, I would do that. I would go to the creative setting and I would set it private. Yeah. In moderation for some kids, it's an interesting there are video games that can actually help with certain cognitive development. So certain things, but very rarely Mm -hmm. are we going to see like growth. It's not like if you took away this screen, he'd be missing out. He'd miss something in his development. Hand eye coordination. He might be learning. Right. So, um, in some studies, you know, like with certain very specific games, they've, looked at hand-eye coordination and and the the the, the, positive benefits but like it's not moving the needle more than the negative could Uh so on balance i would say most screens are kind of like chocolate Mm -hmm. or junk food Mm -hmm. yummy and fun but not too much right occasionally you have really cool learning ones i think that those games that you're talking about are actually i don't know if they're called games but they're kind of right whatever they are yeah apps (laughs) apps (laughs) Um, I'm 100, (laughs) so I don't even know why you're talking to me. So they can be beneficial when they're used in, in the right settings and in small doses, Uh but they are also built to be addictive. Addictive. They just are. You get a lot of feedback. You get the, the reward center of your brain keeps getting feedback. So you want more of it. So anything like that, you need to set limits because kids won't set them themselves. And like, what are the dangers of something that has those kind of rewards built in like what happens well one thing that happens is that you don't like a little tiny brain you get it to a little tiny developing cute brain that doesn't have capacity to stop yeah and you're missing a lot of times with screens the negative is what you're not doing Mm -hmm. you're not having one-on-one interactions with a Mm grown-up you're not having a social relationship with someone in real life Mm -hmm. you're not reading you're not running outside and moving your body you're not doing chores to help around the house and grow the house yes he has not painted the house yet (laughs) yes so a lot of it is that links with childhood obesity links with you know, lower literacy rates links Uh with, you know, just things where you're like, wow, this is on balance, not Not. a superfood. Yeah. But it doesn't, it's not ruining brains in small doses. I really like the chocolate analogy that really works for me. Um, And because I think that's something I can, uh, that's a way I can explain it to him because he sort of understands generally which foods are good for him and which aren't. But that has like a physical immediate effect. Like if he eats too much sugar, he gets stomach ache and he knows yeah. now the limits. Right. And that is there are, you know, it's the same thing when you're on the screen too much. It's even harder to get off the screen and sometimes leads to more tantrums or difficult behaviors. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is just we have so much trouble regulating ourselves anyway mm-hmm. when we're young and old, but certainly a developing brain. Yeah. And then you throw this into the mix and it can get challenging. So setting up 
guardrails can help. And when you decide what's important to you and you make them kind of non-negotiable, you can even set them up together. Let's sit down and figure out when do you feel like it's really fun mm-hmm. to play mm-hmm. and um, and what what is important to you time to get done in the day. Now, this is a six-year-old, so <laughs> like he's going to need help. Right. <laughs> um, but you can sort of be a collaborator in some ways, but you're still in charge. And I think remembering you're in charge and that the whole goal of his childhood isn't just for him to enjoy himself. It right. feels like it is. Right. But if he's always happy, that means that you're dancing around the world to make him never experience the little challenges, like mm-hmm. having to give up using his screen for mm-hmm. the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that build resilience in the face of like a loving parent mm-hmm. who's like, hey, I know this is a bummer. I also know that this is just a have to right now. We mm-hmm. have to put this away. And I'm here for you to be mad at. Right. <laughs> like the end. Yeah. I'm going to read to you my joke question that's uh-huh. also in here. Okay. Uh, you're, I'm preparing you that it's a joke, so you don't have to laugh. And then I want to ask about I mean, Linux. if I do laugh, uh, then it's a really good joke because now I'm sort of yeah, primed I'm gonna not to. Yeah, I'm going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie says that there, like, he might develop a horn from Tech Neck. And my question was, how big will this horn get? And does it come with any special powers? Right. I think it doesn't land as well when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> but it not landing is part is part of what I'm going for. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Then a game. That is part of it too. It sounds so silly, but you don't want to be hunched over a screen and like No. You just no, don't. No. Even though you can scare him with the horn. You, I mean <laughs> you want to be trustworthy. So I feel like I so the horn, doesn't the horn happen. thing doesn't happen i wouldn't want him to think it does because mm-hmm. then when he finds out it doesn't he's gonna be like my dad doesn't know anything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he knows i know other stuff okay it, <laughs> i'm just kidding you do you <laughs> <laughs> now for real so limits here's what we're thinking mm-hmm. but we didn't actually want to start putting anything okay. into practice until we spoke to you but we right. were thinking and we've already sort of started having a conversation with him that he could do an hour of screen time a day on the weekdays and two hours on the weekends. Mm -hmm. You know, not knowing Sonny, and I'm sure it's a case by case, like. Totally case by case, yeah. Totally case by case, but that doesn't seem like too much. I'm not telling him to eat like 100 candy bars. No, I think the, the easier thing to do over the years is to definitely decide when screens are not on the table, Mm -hmm. like mealtime, bedtime, Mm -hmm. an hour before bedtime. Those are not good times for screens because it's like having espresso. Right. So rather than thinking like exactly by the clock, I would think about what parts of the day. Not Exactly. What parts of the day and not setting him up to fail by like interrupting in the middle of a game, for example, Uh or whatever it is. (laughs) Um, and then also with games or apps or whatever the hell this is sitting down with him and asking him to do it with you and show you how he does it is a really nice way to connect and also makes it less like you in the battle against the kid and the we're we're on it like we downloaded it it's awful I mean not awful in like a scary for parents way just like I don't know if your daughter plays Roblox. No, but okay. I, my daughters are in high school. And oh right, right, right. Like, it's past. <laughs> it's um, not for there, them. there is a game. So Roblox, that like, there is games within Roblox, yeah. and um, I think kids can design games too. Yeah, and that part's really cool. Actually. Yeah, but then like they charge other kids to play them, and there's like a whole economy, and they're like asking for Robux, which is like beyond yeah. scary. Um, but he likes to play this game called Brookhaven, where, <laughs> and he makes us play with him. You just like go into a world, and you 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 pick a house. Yeah, and then and then he's always on Facetime with his with his friends or his right. cousins, which is part that which part I cute. like. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "You want to come over to my house?" And then he like kicks him out of the house. Like that is the game. Yeah, there there is no point. Yeah. To it. But that's th- that part of it is totally fine. It's weird, but you're engaged. His family's engaged or friends. Yeah. And with limitations, it's totally great. It right. only gets questionable if you get like if you see the panic that you're stopping or right. if you get into fights over it or it interferes with 
enjoying going to the park or the party because he wants to stay home. It definitely does. Like, okay. I have to be honest. Like, okay. it, we've let it get to the point where he he wants to bring it everywhere. He wants to bring it to the table. Like, we don't allow that. But, but he's going to want to. And that I would be super clear about. Think of that as the, the seatbelt. Like, we're not mealtime and bedrooms are for sleeping and connecting. Yeah. And you don't want to get that murky territory because this is a six-year-old. You are not just dealing with today, but you're sort of trying to build skills yeah. over time so that when he has the really the devices that we do worry more about, like the handheld devices, mm -hmm. um, that he can learn healthy relationships with those devices mm -hmm. And that you actually are mentoring mm -hmm. and guiding and that you mean business. Yeah. Okay. I do mean business. <laughs> that brings me sort of to my next question. A lot of times his screen time is our screen time. Yeah. And our break, you know? Of course. That's um, every parent. Yeah. So like... What am I supposed to do? Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, I'm addicted to my phone. Yeah. I'm addicted to screens. I, we need, you need to help us all. I think that that is the most important thing, is that he's watching you. So the biggest motivator for us to, you know, revisit our habits in life is the fact that we have a small person who's learning who's habits from us. Watching us. Yeah. So I would say... For me, because it's true, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends, you know, two hours is sort of the cap on screen time. For up, humans. For humans. Fully grown For young. Ones. Well, no, they don't have anything to say about they fully grown humans. But, you know, no more than two hours a day. Um, we're not talking about, you know, FaceTime or something that you're doing with family or whatever, but um, thinking of two hours a day and also typically like, they recommend with younger kids, like you watch a show with your child, it's interactive. But the reality is that no one is doing that because the whole point of putting the TV on or the screens or the apps is so that you can have a break. Mm -hmm. So I would, as you're carving out when you're allowing this, mm -hmm. I would say be realistic about when you want that break and when you wanna be on a screen and that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and just be honest with yourself about it. I would also just, this is really not that you asked, but I want to help you for the long game. Mm -hmm. I would not have your screens near the dinner table or the breakfast table or any meal time. We don't. Okay. We don't. We don't. Because those are the things that if he comes to a meal with you out mm -hmm. and you're feeling desperate, I would just do anything you can to mm -hmm. not have it be screen. Yeah. Even if he has to be bored. Yeah. Because kids need to learn how to be bored and they don't get those opportunities anymore. I agree. Um, but it's annoying. So I understand if you're like, I'm ignoring what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Because like we were driving in the car and he was on his screen and he was running out of batteries. And I was like, oh, like you might have mm -hmm. to look out the window. Right. Like, God forbid, you know, and like know what it's like to be bored. It's super and it's not important. the end of the world and you'll be okay afterwards. Yeah. Every time you start to feel terrible about how uncomfortable he is when he's bored uh -huh. or in those moments, remind yourself of the gift of having those moments in the setting of like the safety of loving parents right. and a happy life. Because right. without that, it's he a fra he'll be fragile. Yeah. 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 Also, this is what I think sometimes too. It's like the devil on my shoulder. Yeah. Maybe it's like he goes to school all day long and, you know, it's, it's a great school. Um, but, you know, he's he's being he's he's working hard. Yeah. And, you know, if I ha if I work hard all day long, like I, I, I can watch TV for three hours and like feel like I yeah. want to zone out. And that's seems OK with me. But um I don't want to apply like a different standard to him. Well, I think he's just got a developing brain. Uh -huh. So you want to make sure that he, yeah, he has a day with school. He gets physical activity. Mm -hmm. He has social time. He eats his meals in conversation. 
And then there's very little and reads a couple books at night. There's not that much time left over for screens once you've once you've filled in the day with all of that. Right. Right. So it's the like weekends, you... who cares? But okay. well, um, I, I would say, you know how much is too much because his mood will change. Yeah. And you definitely don't want to. I would. This is not evidence based because nobody is randomly assigning one kid who's allowed to bring the screen everywhere and one kid who isn't. But I would probably discourage bringing the device to play in the car unless you're doing a road trip. Like have guardrails. Yes. Like we yeah. don't do that for the ride to school. That's no. when we're going to talk. Right. But we if we're taking a 5-hour trip, do we whatever you, we, we need, need it. it. Yeah. You know, if but you're flying cross day, country, yeah. Obviously, do whatever, eat whatever, have whatever. But in the everyday, make habits yeah. that are non-negotiable. So there's pushback in the beginning, and then it's like oh. we we were doing it that way. No iPad in the car unless it was a long trip. Like we just knew that those were times where he could he could deal. Yeah, without it. Um, I will be honest. Like we're in a free fall right now because right. we were just waiting for this moment. But I feel confident that when we get back, like he he gets out of school at three, normally has something until four. Mm -hmm. We get home, maybe four to five. That's his time. Is a nice time to do screen time up until dinner is ready, and yeah. then we turn it off and we go into our process, which is like we all eat together. Yeah. He helps clean up, and we go into shower and books, and like we we Great. we kind of prolong that. That's a long process yeah it's conversation <laughs> right but i think that sounds great yeah and and so if the part of it that makes it tricky is that you he really wants it in the car or he really wants it instead of reading books before bed it's just not it's just not what you guys do right. so it's not going to be a fight it might be for like two weeks yeah but then it's not i am nervous uh -huh. to to do it because i think like as a first time parent maybe or just as a parent you're you're like you don't want to you're afraid to hurt them or make them upset even though you know it's 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 for the best um but i think he is pretty resilient in that even though he might get all this screen time now when i take it away i know he'll get over it just like he got over all the other you know restrictions we Challenges. put yeah, yeah for his own well-being and then i would just keep reminding yourself in your head just say like these are critical times to challenge my child mm -hmm. because without these experiences of like the tiny bumps in the road, when he goes to high school and there's like a big bump that you can't do anything about, if he hasn't experienced like that survivable, uncomfortable feeling mm -hmm. over and over and mm -hmm. over, and he hasn't looked at you and seen that you don't feel scared that he's upset, he's going to have no idea how to handle the stuff that comes at him right but if you look at him with instead of panicked like oh my god he's so upset we have to fix this feeling right if you look at him like with the like sturdy confidence mm -hmm. of you're having a feeling and it's right. really hard yeah i'm here for it yeah it feels so good over time it just doesn't feel good right now yeah but it's like this person who's your person who's who you look up to who you trust is so calm because That's they know me. you're okay. That's me this time. Yeah, right. I have That's to be you. the calm one. You have to yeah, be yeah. the calm one. Like he looks up to me. Got like it. he's looking like, at I'm you. I'm like, yes, I do look up to him. Yes. <laughs> no. He looks up to you. Yes. Yes. And so we're sort of training him how to cope with actual bigger problems, live in that uncomfortable moment and know. And know what Because ends. I'm here, it's going to. Totally. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And it, you're going to get over it. Exactly. But yeah. if you alternatively are like, Oh my God. Okay. We have to fix this. Okay. You can't have the screens, but we are going to get you ice cream. And oh my God. It, uh, right. He's going to think there's something very wrong yeah. with how hard it is to feel this way. I don't want him to feel that way. Yeah. He, he's not like a, a tantrum -y kid, but I do remember he threw a tantrum in Walmart when he was like four because we were not going to get him a toy. And like yeah. my worst fear as a parent is like his bad behavior or his tantrum like affecting other people. So like I was freaking out, but I knew like, uh, you have to stay calm in that moment and kind of just pretend like it's all good. Like, I mean, if you can really be calm, because yeah. it's your nervous system he's reading. It's not your like facial expression. Right, right. So if he knows that like inside you're basically saying he's not being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Yes. 
nor am I. And the people around us are definitely judging, right. but like, like, whatever. Right. Your message, because you're saying that to yourself, your message to him without saying any words is like, this is just a moment. Mm-hmm. And those kids are more self-regulated later. Mm-hmm. But it has to be authentic. So mm-hmm. it's like... You can't be like faking it. You can't really fake it. Only because it's they're so smart. Right. I mean, I felt like that was advice we got even when he was an infant um, and they were crying that like you need to stay calm because they can like feel your heartbeat. Yeah. Like, it's and, called co-regulation. Yeah. Okay. And they like they borrow your nervous system, which doesn't mean that like if you're having a terrible time and you're really upset, they need to. I mean, you can just say, I'm really upset right now. Right. I know how to take care of myself in my upset. So you don't have to worry. But yeah, right now. I'm, I'm a little stressed. Yeah. OK. I wonder for some of the people listening who have older kids, um, you know, I feel like this is how it starts. And then it can it can snowball if, if you don't treat it correctly. What does that look like? Um, and like, what is some of kind of the research out there on it? I mean, right now is not a great time because there's a lot there are a lot of headlines about how harmful social media is. Uh-huh. And so I think when we think of screens, there's gaming addiction and mm-hmm. there's social media addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so temperament based. So there is no one size fits all. Like there are some kids that are older that have s- access to screens and social media. Now, I would say push that date like the social media social day. media and getting a device and all that stuff and even when you get your first phone you don't need to get all the apps first mm-hmm. like first be responsible with the phone and show that and then maybe a year later you get social media and then see how it's going um, but all that is later and i think you just have to really promise yourself that you won't succumb to feeling like there's pressure because they only need to fit in through devices when no one else is available. So like if everybody, Mm -hmm. not one peer is not on devices, then you are, yeah, then it's like, okay, now we we should help him. And then even when that happens, you want to think about just enough to have that social access, Mm -hmm. but not more than that. There's no need because What can happen is for some kids, if they bend in the direction of like really being into the devices Mm -hmm. and um, they can it it can become super unhealthy for other kids. Again, you're going to know, is he giving up a social experience because he wants to be attached to the phone? This is the same with older kids. Mm -hmm. Are they I mean, we're seeing that now they go out less. They have in real life interactions Mm -hmm. less, which I'm an introvert, so like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but for some kids, it's it's making them lonely. It's making them feel detached and unhappy. So you have to just pay attention to that, and you want to look at algorithms for older kids. Like, just go look at their phone. See if their they're algorithm they're... is like, you know, how to be better, how to how to um, look better, how to be skinnier, how to be buffer, whatever it is, that's very different than an algorithm that's like, you know bunnies and whatever puppies or whatever yeah. yeah like cars i don't know I, well, like what is your relationship like with social media like uh, i am on instagram a lot but it's sort of like that's where my hobbies live and like if i want to like you know i mean it's embarrassing to admit but like look at golf swing videos well but that's actually a great example of that is not harmful if you picked up your I'm social media really i mean going through it. <laughs> you you definitely could challenge yourself as he's observing to leave your phone out of the room at night but Mm -hmm. that's hard for people it's way better for everybody's health and sleep um you just don't get as high quality sleep if there's a phone in your room after 11 but but your algorithm of golf swings is not hurting anyone your algorithm that has like things that make your stomach turn Mm -hmm. you know if if I pick up my phone and in my algorithm are things that are making me angry politically or they're making me feel ugly uh-huh. and like there's like 10 ads for, a, you know, an aging woman or whatever it is that is my pain point uh-huh. in the moment, uh-huh. then it doesn't feel good. But if I'm seeing like my algorithm is a lot of dog stuff and like that's fine. Okay. You know, golf swings, 
fine. So really, it's like, how does your stomach feel when you look at your For You page? Mm -hmm. You could think of it that way. And if your stomach is like, I feel less than, I feel ill, I feel like I'm angry, then you're getting the wrong algorithm and it's not healthy. It's same for kids. It's yeah. same for young people. If their algorithm is messed up like that, it's a problem. You need to set better, better limits or maybe you take a break from social media. But if their algorithm is, you know, stupid golf swings, I, not to yeah. judge the golf swings. No, I'm sure they're, they're amazing. So on plane. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's good and bad there. Do you get a stomach ache from looking at golf swings? No, no. Okay. I, I, I there's nothing that's hurting me there. But the one thing that I do worry about is like if I have a free second that's what you go to i'll pull it out yeah. it's like reflex now yeah we all sort of have like that's just that's what a, we suffer because of social media we do i mean i think that's one thing to just challenge ourselves with is pick you know if that is your habit pick two times in the day you know when you're getting in the elevator at work or when you're walking to the parking lot or i'm naming like such a suburban lifestyle yeah but something like that that you promise yourself I'm not looking at my phone. I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. You know what I like to do? Like if if I'm at like a restaurant or something waiting for someone, which would be like the total time yes. to pull your phone, just be like, I'm not going to do it. And I know that's really hard. Look around and people be like, yes, I'm sitting by myself and maybe someone won't be here, but I'm fine. And then <laughs> I'm like, good for you. No, I mean, not to date myself, but I was thinking about how as a full on adult, I was sitting waiting to meet people in places in a bar in New York City and there was nothing you always had to bring a book with you if you didn't right, want to look like a right. loser yeah yeah <laughs> and then or iPhones happen and stare at people yeah and it's okay but it's a hard exercise now because you wonder are people going to think that I want to talk because right, I don't I just right, want to look at people right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at you you yeah, can go back to me. whatever you're doing <laughs> the other thing is like if you're with someone and they take out their phone, then you have the reflex to like take out your phone because you know they're not like paying attention to you. Yeah. But well, studies show that even if you have your phone out on a table, the quality of the conversation is reduced because you're distracted by it. Yeah. Because that's why, even if it's in your bedroom at night and you're not on it, and why you have to be vigilant when you have kids who have phones. Mm -hmm is that it reduces sleep quality even when it's across the room and you can't get to it because you just know. Hmm. I'm thinking Winnie sleeps with her phone out of the room and I put mine, my chargers on my desk, which is all the way in the corner. So once I put it on there and set the alarm, I'm done for the night. But like I have my other screen TV going. I'm like, is that that's bad? Is that bad? I mean, you don't see, I mean, if you're I'm okay. healthy and you're, yeah getting exercise and you're like living your life and you feel pretty good then it doesn't seem like screens are a problem right okay like we don't need to look for problems right like part of this is also like i look at technology as progress and like yeah there are some bad side effects and we need to be aware of them and set guardrails but like i get so much stuff done on my phone it's a miracle i used to want <laughs> the answer to every question in my pocket i remember in library class is. yeah being like <laughs> Fucking, I got it. What was it called? The periodic tables? Like, what? No, I need a better way. And now it's right over there. Yeah, we don't need to turn it all into this is the devil's work because right. there's a lot of cool progress. Yeah. It's just how are we using it? Like face tuning? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that's, right. a, that's actually a really good example <laughs> of you wouldn't want as you're, as Sonny gets older, when he's starting to see what you guys are doing. Yeah. You want to pay attention to that because that's what you you want to model and you're mentoring. But it yeah, doesn't all have to be bleak. Like if things are going well, if everybody's getting the stuff done in the day that they want to be getting done and everybody's breathing fresh air and moving their bodies. Yeah. Right. It's important to kind of look at the whole picture, too. Always. And like he's a happy little boy and like yeah. he's not we're not in trouble. But th there is there is some some limits that we need to set. That We're the parents. Because you're the parents. I always forget. It's hard to realize. Right. You just called yourself a full-blown adult. Like, we, in your head, you are a kid, I'm but assuming. It's, yes. Like, yeah. I turned 50 a, a month ago. What? I'm old. <laughs> like, my grandmother was younger than I am. <laughs> and I still am like, I'm in charge. Like, it blows my mind yeah, every day. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that a lot of people 
hearing you say that. Are freaked out by how who they're no <laughs> who they're who they're listening to about screen time. Well, I'm just like you know, <laughs> you obviously have it together, and if you're thinking that way, yeah, then, we all do. Yeah, they must feel better. I think if you, I mean, I have the benefit of talking to people one on one in in their intimate moments, mm-hmm. not that kind of intimate, but mm-hmm. intimate, vulnerable, emotional moments. And so what I have learned over the years is other people don't have that benefit necessarily unless it's their work. Mm-hmm. And so they don't realize how many thoughts we have that everybody else has, right. but we think are like these quiet, private, weird thoughts. Right. We're all thinking. We're all weird. Same. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good way to yeah. put it. All right. Well, I mean, that's all my questions about screen time. All I right. feel like... Like I have a plan. Like yeah. like Winnie and I are gonna get on the same page, and we're gonna sit him down and use your strategy of like, w- when do you want to do this? And take some time to explain to him why, just like chocolate, you just can't do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And you're getting his feedback, and then you, as the adults, will say, "Thank you for letting us know. This looks great." Or we're gonna think about this a little bit because maybe he puts a little bit too much on there, mm-hmm. and you'll right. And you'll, here's the deal. Yeah. Because they, in the end, they want to know that we're in charge. There's nothing more relieving than having a captain of a ship. Right. I mean, that's what Whitney is for, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. We're in charge for Sunny. I can do that. I can do that. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Thanks um, for having me. This was me. great. I have probably a million other questions, but we'll save it for another time. That sounds good. All right. 